Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Right, and first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Ao, uh, the organizer of this symposium, for uh, inviting me to, uh, to speak here. Uh, it's a great honor and privilege. Well, um, to be very honest, I'm no expert in property uh, investment. All right, just case in point, the, the condo that I'm staying in is only my second investment in my whole life. And I bought it not for really investment, but to put a roof over our heads. That's it. Right? So you are hearing from a novice point of view. Right? But then as chairman of the GMB3, I would like to share with you my experiences and how we do things. Right? And uh, it's not very much based on uh, textbook or what. It's just sometimes simply uh, practicing good habits and practicing common sense. Right? My, field, my, uh, my residences outside of Malaysia, I stay in four other countries besides Malaysia, and I stay in condominiums or in hostels, and there are some good practices that uh, we thought is, is, uh, is very, very good. Okay, right. Now, what contributes to the uh, value of the investment? All right. Um, generally, of course, when you first buy in, the physical facilities, the building itself, all this is the value of the investment. But, of course, Location, maybe the privilege of the developer, the concept of the building, or even the township, yeah, um, etc. So all this adds up to the initial property of the investment. That is basically like your your baseline investment. Okay, then what goes next? Now, when time comes, right, will the value go value go up or go down? Well, it can happen both ways, and it depends on how well I say is that uh, how well is is maintained and uh, how well it's sustained to make, the, to make the investment stay, or better still, to go up in value. Now, uh, let me draw an analogy of the management of a development. It's like um, the hardware and the software of things. I, I, I was a computer programmer, so I can't, I can't run away from these terms, hardware and software. Now, the hardware, as you guys will know, is the physical building, the facilities, yeah, etc. Now, the software. Well, what are the software? Software are the human resources, the people involved in managing the, 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 the condominium. So this one means what? The property manager, the JMB, uh, our service partners like the cleaners, gardeners, yeah, and the guards, etc. Okay, and, uh, and of course not for forgetting the developer, the one who built the, the, the condominium. Now, hardware will degenerate over time, as I said earlier. Right, uh, it's the software that runs the hardware, right? So if you do not have a good software, the hardware will just deteriorate and fall apart, right? So it's like in computers, uh, every time you blame the computer, no, you should blame the people who program the computers, all right? So that's how, that's how I see it. Now, my topic here is how to protect and grow your property value doing it our way. So I'm going to speak uh, from what I've done and what I've seen at my own condo, all right? Not from any textbook or, or, or anything, right? Okay. And I'm also presenting it in the perspective of the JMB because I did ask the organizer, do you want me to present it as an, as an investor talking or as a JMB? So it's a JMB. Okay, let's do JMB, right? Let's start with the JMB. Uh, okay, now, I want to run... The JMB like a corporation, uh, having worked in, in corporations all my life. So it should be done in a very professional manner. Okay, and uh, see, what is the uh, management team? Management team, as I say, consists property manager and the JMB. Right, the property manager shall be reputable or world class or at least first class, right, and it's resourced with qualified people. Uh, with the right experience, and more importantly, also with uh, equipped with uh, um, like the operational SOPs, yeah, and procedures, and then the ma building manager also must be someone who is very experienced, uh, especially with interpersonal skills, because you are dealing with uh, the people in the condominium. You'll be surprised, or rather, you rather not. Uh, condominium has all kinds of people involved, you know. Okay, now, 
The GMB is super important. Right, where are we now? The GMB is super important. Right, the, we elect the GMB members, hopefully with the following principles and attributes. Number one, we must have the trust and the integrity. Right, and this is super important. The experience. The experience of GMB members do, it will, be, will be very helpful uh, for, for the, for the uh, property manager as well because they are the ones who will be guiding yeah, and providing direction to the property manager. Right? And they must also be committed. Right? They, are, they must be willing to spend time, effort and sweat in running the GMB. Uh, they should be persistent in their pursuit for excellence and tireless in their efforts. Right, a mix with some retirees would be great because they have some time, experience, and patience. Right, maybe appoint someone with like, white hair like, like me or no hair. Like, uh, it, it's, it's worthwhile. Right? And be accountable for what we do. Right? Spend money like it's your own. Right? Now, leadership. JMB is strategic. It's supposed to provide the direction. Right? And then we have people skills, like I mentioned just now. And uh, one important thing here is we practice democracy at the GMB, right? We deliberate on issues, on matters, then we discuss, we vote, and then we make a decision based on the voting. After the decision is made, all GMBs are expected to unite, fall in line, and then work for the common goal, okay? And then cultivate relationship with the developer. Um, this is really a, a long-term attribute that we must have because a developer cannot just build, sell, and then walk away. All right? um, I stay in Desa Park City, and I heard from the Desa Park City uh, CEO himself, Dr. Uh, Dr. Joseph Lau. In fact, uh, in one of the uh, interviews with Ms. Ao, he did pledge that even though the DLP might be over, but they'll still continue to take care of us. And I remember that, and I have it recorded. So it will be, uh, it will be very useful in the future. And I know he, he means it. So that's why I'm looking forward to working with him on the long term. Yeah? Right. And then setting high standards. Most important is we have to do it right the first time. Right? Um, from, from my experience in, con in corporations, if you don't do it right the first time, it's still a lot, a lot more effort to repair it and to bring it back up to normal again. So always strive, spend, invest a bit more time in getting it right the first time. Thereafter, it will be so much easier to, to go around. And then aim high, right? For, for example, my condo won the gold award. First attempt, first JMB. Uh, nothing could be sooner. So we, are, we were very excited that we did that. So this is actually proof that uh, our, our drive is doing right the first time. Okay? So we set up our high standards now for subsequent GMBs to follow. Right? Now, another term I like to use is called professional volunteerism. We are volunteers. We are unpaid. Right? Yet, we are committed to face challenges in making des uh, decisions. It's, it's actually a, a sacrifice that we have to do. Right? And uh, one more point is care and consideration for neighbors and the community. With that in heart, it can drive a lot of initiatives or projects that we can do to help the neighbors. Always think about the residents and the owners that are living in the condominium because that is what you are here for. We are their representatives. Okay? Now, um, in terms of the, in the corporations, we hear about shareholders and stakeholders, right? Shareholders clearly are the owners, right? Stakeholders are the property managers, uh, JMB itself, but JMB are also owners. And then we also have the uh, service providers or service partners and, and the staff of the uh, uh, property managers. Now, we need a world-class professional property manager. They need to be appointed to run the day-to-day -day operations. The JMB will provide directions, right? And uh, there will be one, we'll be launching the Clean Click e-community app uh, very soon to facilitate the communication between the stakeholders and the stake owners. Right. Now, how do buyers or renters value the investment? Now, um, speaking from a buyer itself, 
we look at not just the physical qualities of the condominium, but we also look at the life experience or the, the life experience or quality of life that that development can consider. I, I look beyond just the condominium I'm living in, right? Example for the South Park City, um, we, I look at the community. The community way of life is so important, right? There are parks and places you can walk or jog or cycle very safely, so security is an issue. Lots of greenery, and uh, there's also lots of F&B outlets that we can just go uh, with just merely uh, by walking distance and so on. So all these community type kind of characteristics are considered when, we, when I buy a property. Okay, now. Financial control and all that. Um, okay, sorry. Now, the financial control. I'm quite proud to say that uh, we have a very healthy maintenance and sinking fund uh, balance. All right? So we enjoy a very high collection rate of uh, 97%. Uh, how we achieve 97%? Again, back to what I say, we did it right the first time. You know, at the very first moment, we need strong process and good SOPs to manage the collection process yeah, and to manage especially the, the, the late payments and all that. So far at 97, I think we are doing pretty well. The few percent are, uh, you know, like a couple of people, owners from overseas. So logistically, it's a bit difficult to deal with them sometimes, but we are, we are very much on it. So, all right. And then, care and consideration for our neighbors and community. How I'll do it here is uh, the experience. All right, um, the, the owners must feel the life experience, the quality of the life experience that the condo can offer. You know, just like you run a hotel, right? Or just like you run a bank and, uh, and how do the customers feel? They want what is the service level expected and the experience that they go when they visit you. Now, here are the program initiatives that we have done. Yeah, so... Driven by the GMB, we embark on the following uh, initiatives. The first and the foremost, um, how do we deal with uh, crisis management? Now, management must be prepared for any crisis, right? Crisis can make or break an organization. Very simple, right? So, under preparedness for a crisis will cause mayhem and residents, and they'll lose faith on the management. So we have to be very prepared, and with that, they will save the residents a lot of worries and pain. Right? So together with the property manager, we have in place the water crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic contingency plans. I'll go through it very briefly. All right, now, water crisis. Um, as you are all aware, right, anybody who lives in Selangor and KL, for the past couple of years, there have been quite numerous water cuts. All right, so, but our condo never ran out of water, right? We never ran out of water, right? How? We have the contingency plan. So the GMB and the uh, property manager work out and, and to detail out the contingency plan. But the crux of the, the plan is like that. First, we estimate how long the water is going to last, how big is our, our tanks are, then we determine what's our consumption, and then from there we determine, okay, I think we can last four days without rationing. Right? After rationing, how long can we, uh, can we last? Right? Meanwhile, during the water rationing exercise, we read the water tank levels every few hours, every, uh, or at least three or four times a day, right? just, to mean, just to make sure that there's enough water to go by. Right? Is the water run rate is too much? for us to, to cope, or is it running well? And then with this, we always send updates to the consumers, uh, to the residents, make sure that they are well informed. Because once they are well informed and we've done the uh, rationing exercise and rationing schedule, they, they feel at ease that uh, everything is under control, right? And then for the last part, we have this uh, water breaching inlet uh, that we can use to uh, take in water from the uh, shabas or commercial water trucks, if need be. 
Now, COVID-19 pandemic, right? We have the plan, and plan basically is like that. We increase the cleaning and sanitization frequency at the common areas, uh, corridors, uh, facilities, and so on. And then we even procured new sanitizing machines, all right? And then we give masks to those who forgot to wear. So we are not in the habit of like finding them and you know putting them at a corner and say, if you forget, nah, this is a mask for you. We dig on their conscience and hopefully next time they won't forget, right? And then finally, when COVID-19 actually hit home, we operationalized the home quarantine plan, right? Up to now, um, we had uh, seven victims spread over five uh, households, but all these were import cases. They were not from, from within, right? And what we did was we explained to the victims our home quarantine procedure, what to do, what not to do, and then we uh, mobilized the guards and the cleaners on how to deal with the food deliveries. They order, we deliver food from the guard house to the door for them. We even arranged for their garbage disposal, asked them to leave the garbage at the door, and then we deliver garbage straight downstairs to the garbage room. And meanwhile, following the tracks, we sanitize along the way. And sometimes, yes, they have to go to the medical center for checkups or to, to uh, whatnot. Again, we accompany them to the car park yeah, until they leave. And again, we sanitize following the tracks of them. So we took very great care and precaution uh, on, on, on how this. And also very important um, to show that we care, we, uh, we actually buy fruit baskets, JMB members, out of our own pockets, yeah? And to, to give them and, and say, wish them speedy recovery and all that. And then uh, towards the end or even after the, the episode, I, I did call them and I asked for their feedback, how, how they were assisted, how they were helped. And uh, thank God, they are pretty okay with that, and, and, and they are happy. And we will continue to, to, to do this. Now, the pet-friendly program. Now, this is a very... Sorry, very much. Yeah, pet-friendly. Now, this is a very special feature of our condominium. All right, I dare say I'm a pet owner myself, too, at that. All right, but it's not for selfish reasons. Um, talking with people from outside, pet-friendly condos are pretty hard to find, actually. And I was just talking to my ex-colleagues before, and they were saying, oh, it's so difficult to move, it's so difficult to find a condo because I have a pet. And then, well, welcome here. Welcome to Versailles 3. We are very pet-friendly. And this is a very strong marketing uh, selling feature for, for any condominium. Anyway, we promote what we call uh, responsible pet ownership, right? It is a privilege. It's not a right to own a pet. And we must recognize that, right? Because of the local laws and even the norms, right? Respecting Muslims and all that. So yes, we recognize it's not, a, it's not a right. But if we are very well disciplined and control and, pro, and, and practice control over this, it can work. It can work. And if nobody else complains about it, that is our main objective. All right? And uh, even doctors say, it's good to have pets because it helps to improve your mental and your physical well-being. And, and, and that's very good. Then we have this staff appreciation. Now, we, we never end at saying thank you to our service providers because they are the ones who clean our apartment, who make our apartment safe, and, and etc. So over the Chinese New Year or the Christmas and the Deepavali, we buy them uh, food for them to eat, and they, they love it. Yeah, they love it. That's good. All right. So another one is the uh, garbage disposal. All right. So this one is our recycle program, right? We have a uh, few sets of uh, recycle bins placed all over the uh, condominium at the uh, 
uh, around the condominium at their customer at the uh, residence convenience, all right, which is also pretty important. Okay, um, enabling work study from home. You know when the MCOs came, right, and you see everybody around, father, mother around, kids around, and <laughs> interestingly, I got feedback or complaints saying that oh my my home is a mess. It's so crowded, it's so noisy, I cannot work at home. And then the kids also cannot concentrate because they have to study online and so on, right? So what we did is we had a couple of facilities, one we call the pavilion and another we call the multi-purpose hall. We managed to adapt that as a place for them to start to work at home and also to study at home, right? And we have very strong, powerful internet available at both these facilities. And best of all, free of charge. We don't charge them any single cent. So again, they, they really appreciated that a bit. Right. And then, okay, these are more staff service appreciation, right? We give them presents as well over Christmas. We collect them. And then, um, in terms of Chinese New Year and, and also the, uh, the Christmas, you know, from the bleak COVID-19 period, a lot of people are really driven to nuts. You know, they are very stressed and they are kept at home. So we thought that let's brighten things up, lighten things up a bit. So we spent a little bit more in our decorations, right, and uh, brightly light up the place. And even at the guard house, it's extra bright. So when you drive home at night, the first thing that greets you is a very bright guard house and, and the entrance. And that pleased a lot of people. And I think that's good. And then once, share the umbrella, simple, a donation by one of the JMBs. So anyone who wants to use umbrella, rain or shine, can have it. Right. So overall, what is the key word here? The key word here is about sustainability. How long more can you continue? Right. It's very important. Right. So what's in the future for us? Now, we have to retain the professional world-class property manager. It's a must. JMB might be experienced in our own fields of work, but when it comes to property management, we don't know very much. We don't know everything. So we need them to run day-to-day -day operations. Right? And then one thing brave that we want to do is for future JMB members who are elected, we will perform police and bankruptcy checks. This is for integrity. Now, integrity is very important because the money we are dealing is in the million. All right? So it's important that no people have selfish agenda and so on, that they'll hijack the funds for, for selfish reasons. All right? And then the first CMB have already set a very high standard. We won the award. Yeah? Plus, we need to maintain the professionalism and aim to outperform previous GMBs for the new ones. Right. Adopt technology. Uh, Nchi Aspan has already mentioned, yes, we need to have a smart condo using Internet of Things, IoT. So this will be in our radar for the next JMB if we get re-elected. <laughs> right? And then, not just that, not just for the common areas, we also want to promote a smart lifestyle amongst our residents within their units. We can provide them guidance or to give them the information that they need to, to proceed. Right? And then we implement the Click e-community app that we say. This one takes care of the visitors management system. Uh, that helps the security managing it. Um, and then we have uh, um, sending out notices, making announcements, uh, complaint management. There are so many things that this one can do. So we are looking forward to it. Right. And then other bold recommendations. Adopt like a concierge style, high service standards. Like I live in Thailand, uh, I know. And in Thailand, the service there is top-notch. Really, really top-notch. And I wish one day, you know, the kind of service that we see in Malaysia is as high, you know, better than, than the Thai. Because the Thais, they, they have the DNA, you know. They have the DNA in it, right? For us, there's training and there's all that. Complicated by the fact that most of our service providers are foreigners, right? And English is a... Is a, is a is a reason why, why it's so difficult to, to, to maintain, right? And then finally, 
um, against the long-term thing. Uh, Desa Park City, I, I'm speaking of Desa Park City, yeah? um, they should consider forming like a committee of chairmen or owners, right? At least to be influencer uh, to the developer to, to look at things, um, community-wide things like traffic control, security, even, even the F&B, right? how we can manage and, and, and so on. Okay. So in summary, in summary, the property manager, GMB and developer working together cohesively and trusting each other will make a difference between an appreciating versus a deteriorating asset. Right. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeo.